Uh, the audio should be improved now. I made it a little bit louder. Let me know if you have any issues with uh, the audio balance. If you guys wouldn't mind giving me a heads up if you encounter audio problems whenever I switch games. Um, I use the same capture card for Final Fantasy IX as I do for Mass Effect, and they're on different systems, so they have different default audio settings. So I think Mass Effect has a problem with being too loud, and PlayStation games have a problem with being too quiet. I appreciate it. So the question was, have I backed it? Yes, I backed it on the first day. Um, I haven't looked at any of the stretch goals yet. What are the what are the last couple stretch goals that they're going for? I'll ask my question again here in a couple minutes after stream's cut up. Ooh. Metroidvania roguelike dungeon option? Man. <laughs> Don't say that combination of words to me. I think he is. Yeah, he's at uh, 3868. I already ate this chick and it wasn't worth it. Man, my card is expensive. And it's just protecting shell, it's not even uh, haste. So Rogue is this uh, old, 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 old game. It was a mud. And the basic idea when you say something is roguelike, you're saying that it tends to be randomly generated, procedurally generated. Um, Rogue in particular was infamous for having permadeath. Like you could go as deep as you could, but as soon as you died, if you wanted to try again, you had to start all over. Like a uh, great roguelike game is Binding of Isaac. Played that before. So I feel like when people say roguelike dungeon, uh, permadeath is not necessarily assumed, but randomly generated levels is. It's interesting if you think about it that like randomly generated or procedural level generation is a hallmark of indie development. It's something that was in one of the earliest video games of all time, Rogue. Yeah, Binding of Isaac is a great. Binding of Isaac is a great example of a roguelike. I agree. Come on, there we go. I did twenty. That's usually what I'll do for Kickstarter. Donated to Mighty Number no. Nine too, the Mega Man game from uh, Inafune, but I haven't heard anything on that. They were originally targeting a June release date, but I think it's been delayed. August now? Cool. I'll be playing that on stream when it comes out. I've got Mighty Gunvolt on my uh, 
my 3DS, we could do that too. Got that for free from the uh, in a Fune panel at PAX last year. Zara. Vivi MVP. September 15th. Seems fair. Oh yeah, Shovel Knight's happening. That's going to be a full playthrough. So I already 100%ed it, so you won't get the benefit of a blind playthrough from me, but... Great soundtrack. Actually, the composer for the Shovel Knight soundtrack was at PAX 2. He had a pretty good panel. His contribution to it, anyway. Oh, that'd be really cool, Sneakers. Yeah, uh, Shovel Knight feels like uh, Castlevania Mega Man DuckTales. <laughs> Later, D-Rock. Enjoy. Let's go to Burmesia. Yeah, for sure. I I never looked at the goals in the first place. I just fun you know backed it when I saw it go up. <laughs> cool sneakers. The most money I've down or I've donated to a Kickstarter was for the Reading Rainbow one. I got a cool T-shirt out of it. The eight-bit Levar Burton. You hit a tent outside before we go too far in here. And Tim, welcome. That's pretty impressive, Mega Man. Kickstarting is a really interesting way of uh, funding game projects. I feel like we haven't had too too many examples of bad experiences with kickstarted games i guess it, there's so many still in development it's hard to say yet And when I say bad experience, I mean like high-profile bad experience. I know there's been a lot of shitty games. 
um, that have gone beneath the notice. Ooh, New Game Plus would be cool. Always a fan of that feature. Try to inspect everything. I'm pretty sure there's some permanently missables here in Disc 1. Yeah, that's the one. Best regular battle music. Ukulele is uh, Banjo Kazooie, right? Pretty stoked about that, too. Get a magic hammer from one of these guys. Yeah, he's still something I don't care about. Did I go outside and not actually tent? Apparently. <laughs> I think I went outside and saved without tenting. Like the three playable characters should be a Grant Dynasty style, a mage character, and then like a, a whip user. And an Alucard. Alright, Magic Hammer. I remember there's almost always at least one enemy in the game that you can kill by depleting its MP. I don't remember if there is one in nine. Or which enemy it's best to use Magic Hammer on. Hey, Gogums, how's it going, man? Alright, so there's Alert. Already working on that. So working on Millionaire. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff available. No, it's actually use a tent this time. <laughs> How you been, man? How's it going? There we go. Doing well. Got my uh, 3DS capture cards. So I've been really excited about that all week. Them again it is. A lot of good jumpers in the Final Fantasy IX universe. <laughs> Got a uh, 
Xenoblade Chronicles 3D playing right now. We did um, free play yesterday with uh, a lot of Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm, which is the awesome Final Fantasy music game. I think the damage roll on Forks is very has a lot of variance to it. Like it has a higher cap, but also a chance to roll very poorly. We'll definitely be doing Bravely Default on 3DS. That's going to be awesome. One of the best modern JRPGs. It's going to let us do Chronological Zelda playthrough. Need to find a time slot to fit that in. Probably need to clear out a game first, maybe like after Final Fantasy IX. Bravely Default. Yeah, you should you should play it. It's so good. <laughs> it's it's finally uh, another Final Fantasy game. It feels like the first Final Fantasy since ten. That's kind of true to the series. It's a spiritual sequel to a Final Fantasy sub game called the Warriors of Light. I think Four Warriors of Light. Oh well, I could just one shot all of them. VVOP. I've never played Four Warriors of Light. How long is it? Also, what system is it for? Cook. Oh, I think it's gonna die before he gets to use it. Is Liara and Co are ready to go? Yeah. VV with the OP final hit there. Right on. I like games in that mid range. Probably can't be playing a game as long as Xenoblade. I can't probably can't be playing more than one game at a time as long as Xenoblade, if that makes sense. The longest game we've done so far, by far, was Final Fantasy Tactics, which ended up being 20 parts on YouTube, so it was about a 40-hour playthrough, fairly brisk pace. 
Um, I have a feeling that even at the pace we're going at right now, Xenoblade is going to definitely break that record. Oh man, Mimic! Mimic hype. Don't eat me. Don't eat me, bro! Being eaten is high on the list of things that I ain't trying to hear. Any luck? Way to go in that important door until we've explored everywhere else. Ah. Balls. Maybe we had to walk to get that? That's totally a place where I would have reloaded my save as Kid Marstead, but we'll live with it. I don't think so. I think the walkway, yeah, I think it's intended to fall down so you can get a chest there on the bottom. But maybe you're supposed to like walk over it instead of running over it. It's okay. Go Nicky, go. Welcome.
Yeah, so now I can get this, but couldn't before. Let's see. <laughs> Gen 1? Yep. The true count of Pokemon, right? I ain't trying to hear the 646 or however many there are right now. There's 150 plus more to see. Be a Pokemon master is my destiny. Kabuto, Persian, Paris, Horsey, Radicate, Magnemite, Kadabra, Weaving Bell, Ditto, Cloister, Caterpie, Sandshrew, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Gold, Pikachu. I've talked about it before. I got one of those uh, VHS tapes in the mail like two or three months before Pokemon launched in the US. I think it was because I was a Nintendo Power subscriber. I have not done 12 yet, but I will be doing 12. I own it, and it's a great game that I haven't played since it was, first came out. It's on the list. Since it's a Final Fantasy game, we'll probably get to it sooner rather than later. The goal is all great games, but try to save some obscure great games for when we have a bigger following, more people can appreciate them. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. No, actually, I... I don't really care. They need to keep making more Pokemon games. They need to keep including more Pokemon in them. It was certainly easier to keep track of everything when it was just 150. And I don't think the new Pokemon designs are... any better or worse than the original crew. Yeah, but Evkins and Arbok, their names are, uh, they're anagrams of Snake and Cobra, spelled wrong. Ooh. Of course you can't. Ah, so just, it looks like it's VV Freya VV Eat. Hey, sorry, Samurai, how's it going? Gen 3 was the one Pokemon generation I never played. We'll be doing Pokemon on stream too now that I've got a DS capture card. Hey, buddy. Dude, gold silver is insane. Um, like, the amount of stuff they fit under that cartridge. It's a shame that Satoru Iwata is the president now of Nintendo, because he's such... 
Well, I guess it's good that he's been rewarded for how awesome he is. He is an amazing, crazy efficient programmer. Like, if you read the story about Pokemon Gold Silver, you know, they finished the game and they had all this extra space to include uh, the region from the first Pokemon games because of the way that he did it. He designed this crazy scripting engine for the text in Earthbound. Do you guys see at GDQ this? I think this last one, um, Winter GDQ, they they like program Twitch chat into Pokemon Red. I've never played any of the Pokemon Coliseum games. It's basically where it's it's Pokemon battles, but it turns your Pokemon in 3D. Mm-hmm. Iwata was the... Uh... Here, I'll post the link to his wiki article. It talks about him being... Uh... Yeah, Pokemon plays Twitch. <laughs> uh, talks about how he is known as the genius programmer. Dude is amazing. He's a HAL Laboratory guy, so they did Balloon Fight, Earthbound, Kirby, Pokemon. The wiki article doesn't talk a lot about it, except mentioning it in passing. Yeah, Game Freaks is uh, made up of people who left HAL Laboratory, I believe. Or no, um, people from Ape. Yeah. So that's why there's so many things in common between Earthbound and the Pokemon series, like the main character being a young boy with a baseball cap. Remember, I had folks in chat when I was playing Earthbound and Mother 3 schooling me about how Ape and Game Freak are related. Chill out, Dan. Battle Bobby, well. Getting close to the end of disc one here. <laughs> right, Mega Man? Is anyone in our party really human right now? I mean, I guess we can count Zidane, but he's got a monkey tail, so he's clearly something weird that's not 100% pure human. We've got a rat person, uh, whatever the hell Queena is. <laughs> a monkey guy and a black mage. Yeah, like the the entire cast of characters, Amarant, um, Aiko, kind of, and Garnett, kind of. And it's Steiner, so really, it's Amarant and Steiner. Right. Yeah, go for it, Kami. Thank you for asking.
You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the olden days. You would D level if you died. It was so bad. Like, basically, you know, after you got to max level, you could keep earning experience. Not for anything good. Just to have a buffer in case you died again so you wouldn't de-level. Uh, I'd argue Garnett's not even a human human. That'd be Steiner and Amarant. I mean, Garnet and Nako are arguably human. Whew. Yeah, a lot of the Garnet backstory is is non isn't required. There's a secret you can do in like end of disc three, disc four that gives you more info about it. Some special ATVs. I'll probably do them. Gonna push it over now? No, it already fell over. Thought I saw a question mark pop up. Oh man, so there's a, uh, I'm looking through the driver's stuff that came with my 3DS capture card, and one of the things they have is uh, Oculus VR, so like, they can put each DS screen for the stereoscopic 3D into the different eyes so that you get the full 3D effect. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> nah, Amarant's just a dude, as far as I know. Yeah, welcome. Amaranth's a ginger rasta. Good to see ya.
I think the only secret character is Queena, but even then... I know that you can get her sooner in the game, but I think there's a point where you have to recruit her. Or him, or it. You might be able to turn down Amarant, but like, who would do that? Seriously. Queen is forced on you eventually. You got a few chances to recruit her early, if you go to her marsh. Here we go. Oh my god, we can switch to the oak staff. Nice. I just want to go get unlock some more Chocobo Hot and Cold. Best mini game of all time. Hands down. I think they go out of their way to say Queena is uh, genderless. Queena is like Bimo. They'll refer to Queena as S slash H E. Schklee and Schkler. Yeah. About that sweet spear. Cool. Existential dread. Vivi got that character arc, though. All right, let's see. Cool. Race's wind is a pretty good power, if I remember correctly. Region on everybody. I think there's a moogle in here. I hope there's a moogle in here. Ha 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 ha. Heck yeah, I do. You always want to buy all this stuff. Ooh, mug shot. Ooh, actual good stuff too. I think the Amarant's the last one you recruit, yeah. <laughs> Play as Stiltskin one day. Make a Stiltskin spin-off like they did with uh, Tingle. Oh, they really, they don't force Queena until later than Amarant? Wow. I've never not gotten Queena immediately. Like, the first time it lets you go to Ku's Marsh. Choose Marsh. In Romanized Mandarin, Q is pronounced C-H, so I always want to say Chu. Yeah, you actually don't get to use much of Dagger and Steiner until quite a bit later in the game. 
They end up falling behind a bit because of it. I'm not exactly a dragoon. Oh, poor Fifi. Beatrix about to hear Sword of Doubt, which is one of my favorite songs in this game. My number one favorite song in Final Fantasy IX is um, You're Not Alone, which isn't going to be till the very end of the game. But uh, Sword of Doubt is pretty awesome. Rose of May is the more chill version. She's a Dragoon. Freya. There are red mages that you run into just in passing when you're running around. Like in uh, Lindblom, there's some NPCs called red mages, but none in your party. Yeah, Aiko's more, um... Like... Status white magic, I guess. Guess I'd call it a green mage. Or like an oracle in Final Fantasy Tactics. Mystic. Oh yeah, no, she's still definitely a white mage, but she's she doesn't she's not exactly the same as Garnet. She has uh, different spells and different summons. Yeah. Right. Green Mage is like, I don't know, shields and buffs and debuffs, I think was the thought on that. But the main series doesn't really use green magic. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of separating that out, but then white magic loses a lot of its abilities if it does isn't assumed to have buffs as well. Love to see someone take a stab at balancing status effect magic. It's never really been possible. Pretty much just make bosses immune to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, probably a bad idea. This is Sword of Doubt that's playing right now. Awesome song. About to get Klim Hazard. Yeah, 
Yeah, black magic tends to get like blind silence. But it would be green magic if you were going to go to the trouble of reclassifying them. Joke's on you, I absorb lightning damage. Don't remember if Clem Hazard triggers just automatically eventually, or if it's based on her health. I'm gonna try not to damage her just in case. Ow. cover. Mm, so there's a chance we won't be able to steal everything from her. i try though. steel. Nope. Don't hit Zidane. It's fine. Yeah. Pretty good chance we're not going to get it. Really need Master Thief. I have memories of resetting the game because I couldn't get the steel from her. Here we go. Oh, stock break. Not Clint Hazard. Graphics. You're all tab tab in. Cool cutscene. That's not too super long in the future. It's a sword too, it's only Steiner who could use it, so I'm not going to be using Steiner very much before Cherno anyway. Kuja's probably the most ridiculously clothed male Final Fantasy character. At least they're fulfilling my uh, requirement. 
equal opportunity <laughs> exposure. <laughs> right, AMA? Okay, right, one second, I'm gonna go switch discs. He is a guy. He's just uh, androgynous, which is the Japanese ideal for male beauty. Not suspicious at all. Yeah, Sephiroth as well. And Seymour. <laughs> Seymour is like maybe Final Fantasy's worst job at concealing that someone's a villain. <laughs> he shows up like, dude, that's the most evil looking character I've ever seen. Kafka doesn't really do the that too much. Not be shown in nor is uh, X Death or Golbez or Zeromus. I was gonna say maybe it's a Tetsuya Nomura thing, uh, but this is a uh, Yoshitaka Amano, and it still has Kuja. Yeah. For y'all's benefit, learn something today. When Mega Man says Bishi, he's abbreviating Bishonen, which is Japanese for pretty boy, I think. Beautiful, beautiful boy. So Bishi is a pretty boy. Right, Mega Man? <laughs> Guess eight. Ultimisha is still pretty ridiculously dressed. And kind of comes out of nowhere. But that's... I feel like it's classic to have a villain come out of nowhere in Final Fantasy. Especially with, like, four. Necron in this one. That's true. No question on Ultimisha or Idea. There is a question on uh, Sorceress Adele, who is androgynous but intended to be a woman. You pulled me a hundred times, I would tell you Adele is a man. Adele might be one of the biggest, like, OBT dubs moments in video games where you're like, you're playing through Final Fantasy, you're like, okay, cool, there's this game, fine. Oh, BT dubs, Sorcerer Adele is in space for some reason? <laughs> you're like, uh, alright, guess, guess we're in space now. Ultimisha does, but Adele doesn't really. <laughs> Final Fantasy VIII's pretty bad about OBT dubs moments and uh, 
Probably the biggest offender is Chrono Cross. Bunt cake. Southgate Bunt cake. Yes. It's true. Six is one of the more straightforward Final Fantasy stories. Probably why it's my favorite. Everything in nine up to the, like the last five hours is fairly straightforward. Follows logically and you get to the end you're like, okay. Stand by six. What's uh, what comes out of nowhere in six? Uh, I don't know. Kefka's angel form makes sense in context of the game. Like he he is basically a god. Hey Ryan Depot, how's it going, man? That that might be the closest thing to uh, to weird, but. They are setting that up the whole time. Um, well, uh, Mr. Vec, as I joined because I am a old friend of Dizzy Disaster, so I don't have any sway to invite people to it myself. Uh, you could check out Dizzy Disaster's channel though and talk to him about it. Hahaha. <laughs> That's an interesting point, Mega Man. I would argue there's nothing about angels that uh, should make them be good. <laughs> Much to the contrary, actually. Suppose that's true. I guess uh, if you play Crisis Core, what's his nuts? That, that's a very OBT Dubs game, but uh, in Geol has a one wing, and he's a good guy. Eva, welcome. <laughs> I love the animation with Steiner. That's what I mean about it. I feel like Angel was a good guy. Chill out, Steiner. I'll talk to who I want to. Adelbert Clunky. and on Marcus. Old time bros.
bro? Sure. The only thing that's missable here is the letter, the Mognet letter from the Moogle. There's only one man I call bro, that's blank. In the main Final Fantasy series, Chrono Cross is pretty bad about it. Wondering why Mega Man is saying Space Flea. Here we go. Black Waltz 3, I think. But I think the problem isn't that the it's weird, it's that it comes out of nowhere. Lavos is built up for all of Chrono Trigger, so I don't feel like that's a surprise. Just like with Kefka. Kefka is built up to the whole game. It's a big surprise with the when he betrays Gestal, and then you spend the whole time in the world of ruin hearing that he's made himself into a god so even though it's it's weird it shouldn't be surprising but it's when it's like obt dubs guess what like they give you two minutes of exposition and you're expected to accept it like zoromus in final fantasy 4 like you know nothing about zoromus until about five minutes before you have to fight him Labos is literally a giant monster from space. <laughs> All right, we still get a thief in the party. That's what I'm talking about. So can't afford any summons. Let's see. Doing lots of stealing. That's the Final Fantasy IX way. Every boss fight. Pretty much silver gloves. Yeah, I already have so many linen cuirasses. Another one would just be excessive. <laughs> Welcome back, Jehan. Ouch. Let's 
Schedule update in uh, 40 minutes. We're transitioning to Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect series playthrough in progress where all of the major decisions that Shepard gets are made by chat. The first thing we'll open with is chat will get to decide which uh, new party member we go to recruit next. Yeah, he really likes to hit Marcus. If you're a fan of RPGs and space operas of any kind, Aspect's one of the best game series ever made. <laughs> right, Mega Man? It is a story of my life. When I remember Final Fantasy IX, I remember sitting on boss fights trying to steal stuff for a long time. I got a lightning staff, that's not so bad. He still has one more thing to steal. Maybe he's blindable. Not that he physically attacks often, but maybe he'll just run out of MP eventually. <laughs> Don't know if Scan tells me if he has items or not. Yeah, you're good, Megman. Flame staff. Okay, cool. I should probably go for that then. Get a Fira, and since we already got Thundara now with the lightning staff, take a while though. Mm, I don't have a way to get fire on him to remove that. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Maybe I can kill him and then pick him back up. Normally I would just use uh, Vivi. Yeah. Does she have life? I don't think so yet. Raise. Yeah, no, you're you're good, Mega Man. No problem. I was gonna keep stealing anyway, even if it was a linen Quiros. Just on principle alone, get to hear more of Final Fantasy IX Battle Two, which is an awesome song. Doesn't help that Marcus can't have Bandit, right? The worst one is going to be the Hill Guy, I guess, I think. <laughs> he has this Fairy Flute that's like a 1 in 255 steal. I'm just leaving him frozen before I pick him up. Feels like blinding him was a good decision. Surprising how many enemies are actually, how many bosses are weak against blind and slow in this game. It was a good decision on their part. 
Still nothing important is weak against, um, you know, like death or petrify, but... I wonder if there's any like RNG manipulation you can do around stealing. <laughs> I bet he's gonna run out of MP before we finish him. Be funny. Which boss can you toad burner? <laughs> Someone recorded themselves stealing the uh, fairy flute from the Hillgigas. They like cheated using save states and it still took them an hour and a half. There's also the uh, the book boss that's really hard to steal the demon's mail from. Oh really? That's awesome. Yeah, poor clunky indeed. Ah, uh, don't hit. Oh, good, it missed. We don't hit Marcus with that, man. I have to wonder if it missed because there's not like a frozen animation for Marcus. <laughs> Yeah. But it's easily one of the hardest ones. Hanging out, stealing from Black Waltz 3. So, Mega Man, you're going to be the fifth or sixth person I ask about this. What's your opinion of Record Keeper? Is it worth picking up? I hear it's much better than All the Bravest, which was the previous uh, Final Fantasy mobile game.
It would be nice if it tracked, like if it wasn't just a raw RNG, if it was PRNG and it tracked how many times you failed to steal. Sounds good, I might need to check it out. Awesome Mega Man. Yeah, I feel like I definitely should check it out then. It seems cool. I mean, I like Final Fantasy, and it would be nice to have something to do on my mobile. Oh, awesome. Hey, there it is! I had given up hope! <laughs> Alright, let's just kill him now. Now oh, watch his wipe. <laughs> don't hit clunky, don't hit clunky. Crap. Phoenix down and then ether. Yeah, what the hell, man? That still was nowhere near as bad as Hilgagus. I'm pretty sure I fought him before and gotten it on the first try. Yeah, I got to. I'm sorry. He's, she's at zero, 2 MP. It took me so long to steal it. I feel really bad about it. You're not allowed to use items in video games. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh no, Marcus isn't going to get the experience. <laughs> Ended up not even using the ether. Definitely going to make sure we save now. <laughs> right, Ryan? <laughs> Black Waltz was pissed at Marcus for taking his flame staff. You've changed. I'm a season pro. Was there an item duplication bug, Mega Man, in Final Fantasy V that I don't know about? I'm playing it right now. I know about the W item glitch in FF7. I miss pre-rendered backgrounds, man. 
Every map is a, it's a painting, a work of art. Oh wow, Mega Man. Marcus is from the very beginning of the game. He's in um, Zidane's theater troupe. Oh man, Mega Man, you're taking me back. That's how I used to play games when I was a kid. Um, and, well, that's how I still play games today. I just haven't been doing much grinding on stream. Right, Kami. I suppose that's true. Because they'd have to go back and do it in full 3D. Or just deal with the printed background, damn it. There's something I can get in. Dolly, before we go to Treno. They could just keep the pre-rendered backgrounds the same and just make the models, but yeah, that's true. Nice, Mega Man. <laughs> on the one hand, you're jealous. On the other hand, you didn't do that much grinding on the ghost ship. That is a good point, Kami. It definitely wouldn't be trivial. It's the key thing to take away. Right. Both of which would be extremely expensive. Possibly, we'll see on the minus strike. Don't hit clunky, don't hit clunky. Damn it. I didn't realize how low clunky was. I thought it was just Marcus. <laughs> Glad we didn't. I did save though right when we got outside, so... May, are you in uh are you in chat? <laughs> Indeed I did, burner. <laughs> you raise a fair point. You do you definitely need to heal after every fight in Dragon Quest 8. Dragon Quest 8 is a much harder game than just about any other Final Fantasy. Random trash can easily take you out. <laughs> Andrea loves being right. <laughs> it's her favorite thing.
with the uh, Caduceus Mega Man. Yeah, Andrea has that unlocked. It's pretty nice. Nah, we were fine. That uh, <laughs> that mob was only doing like ten damage to to Garnett. She was doing just fine. <laughs> I wasn't worried at all. Hustle dance on, uh, is it sex appeal? Hey, Flare Wing, how's it going? Not with YouTube sneakers. I definitely had that problem with Twitch. What is uh, what does Hustle Dance do, Mega Man? I don't think I ever went very deep into sex appeal. I'd like to have one of everything for synthesis, just in case. Yeah. AMA, do you hear that? You might need to start uh, going into sex appeal with Jessica. Yeah, no kidding. How, how deep into the tree is that? Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty deep. So it would be worth it at the end of the day. Cool, thanks, Mega Man. <laughs> it's the hundred skill points. Shit, that's like the last ability you get. So you'd basically be giving up all other abilities in order to to get it then. Welcome. welcome. AMA, um, I saw you tweeted something about a neutrino discovered at Ice Cube that also triggered the discovery of a uh, of a supernova. Is that one that's like how far away is the supernova? Question. Yeah, if you already have Caduceus, it'll be a while before you get sex appeal to a hundred then. Okay. Oh, okay. The principle that it's ridiculous that a female character has that as one of her main stats. The only female character in Dragon Quest that's in your party.
what led them to find the supernova? Oh, interesting. I'm going to be playing the new 3DS remake once it comes out. I think she's just staff right now. She's not super, super far into the game. I think she's a uh, sword and courage for the hero, axe for Yangus and humanity, bows, trying to get the multi shot on uh, Angelo. Oh, really, Mega Man? That's awesome. They're both pretty great. Ragasso. Is there a US release for the new 3DS Dragon Quest 8 yet? No, not really. Actually, nothing about her story implies that sex appeal should be part of her character. Other than that, she's a girl and has big boobs. <laughs> right. I mean, if Angelo had a skill called sex appeal too, then okay, fine, but... Yeah. Right. How dare you, Jock Lunky? So much hardship, Clunky. <laughs> That'd be nice, Ryan, although my laptop gets so hot it would probably warm my drink too much. Oh no! Oh, I shouldn't have done this one. Alley Jack, Alleyway Jack, who has a secret name that I don't reveal because this is supposed to be a spoiler free playthrough. Um, but we did talk a little bit about Garnett earlier. If so, apologies. Racer X. Just uh, pop out the CD tray, use that as a cup holder. Oh, nice, right? <laughs> but she uses it for her own gain, I guess, like, um, 
Christina Hendricks character in Mad Men. Eight minutes to Mass Effect 2, by the way. There's an Amarant on the back wall there. It's kind of cool. As long as the latter is what's happening at the end of the day, Kami, I feel like it's fine. But when it's just played, like the stereotype is played straight, it's uninteresting. Talked about how it's also uninteresting to make these like completely unrealistic, like superhero female characters that have no flaws and are not weak in any way. Makes sense, Mega Man. Yangus is pretty much pure axe in Andrea's game too. It's like the auction house in Final Fantasy VI. What's Kuja doing there? I don't think we can get to another save in six minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and save here and get uh, Mass Effect 2 booted up. Take another couple minute break to feed the cats. Okay, let me get that started. I'll get Mass Effect 2 turned on, then I'll put up BRB. We'll get the cats to chill out. <laughs> 